Welcome to WV Mason Presents, the Joe Girardi Show. I'm Meredith Morakovitz, alongside the manager himself, Joe Girardi. And don't forget, at home, there are three ways you can ask Joe your questions. You can email him at askjoe at yesnetwork.com, tweet him at Joe Girardi Show, or head to the Yes Network Facebook page and send him a message right there. Joe, something I'm sure you are tired of talking about already this season, but it is always a topic of discussion, the injuries with this team. And some good news this week, it looks as though guys are making their way back, one in particular, Curtis Granderson. Yeah, he played on Friday. He uh, played eight innings in left field, um, was one for five with a game-winning home run. He's probably got about 20, 25 at-bats under his belt. He is on his way back, and we should see him fairly soon. You've always been a guy that said he originally threw out the figure 50 to 70 at-bats, then he felt as though he'd be ready. You've been saying, based on how he feels, what he's doing there, you see him hit the home run, you have to believe he's starting to get his timing a little bit, but do you push it along a little bit, knowing what that bat would mean in your lineup? Well, I mean, we're obviously excited to get that bat back, but he has to feel good at the plate. He has to say that I'm ready to go. I'm ready to help this club. And when he says that, we'll bring him back. And I'm not a big believer in the number of at-bats, 50 to 70. I know guys get usually 50 to 70 in spring training. If he's ready earlier, he's ready earlier. If it takes longer, it takes longer. I know you're very careful about talking about this and saying that you don't want to get too much into it until he is actually here. But three guys playing pretty well in your outfield right now. You add another guy. With the way you've been short with players throughout the season, I'm sure you'd like to have that option. But how difficult does it make your decision-making process when he comes back? Well, it all depends on if everyone's healthy. If everyone's healthy, then you have to make some decisions. And, and there's some tough decisions. That's a good problem to have, and you can keep every one of those guys fresh and you know I mean we're in a stretch right now I think of 17 days in a row 18 games in those 17 days it would probably help out in that situation. When you look at what he's doing down at the minor league level right now playing left field playing right field playing all three positions essentially do you believe that that's enough time for him to kind of acquaint himself with those other positions? Well I'll let the people that are watching him determine if he's comfortable in left and right now also talk to Curtis about it he can always play center I know that but this way we can found out find out can he play another position if we want to spell one one guy one day and another guy another day. You try to keep your outfield as consistent as you can and not move them around. So let's see what he can do. Joe, they always say in case of an emergency, you have a plan, but did you ever really think you were going to have to go to that plan with Vernon Wells? Well, I didn't because I didn't know that we would be shorthanded. But, you know, I saw him take the ground balls in one day on an off day, and I said, you know, that really doesn't look too bad. And if <laughs> I ever get in that situation, I'm going to do it. And you know that you can get in those situations more often in a National League game. Sure. And you look at Vernon Wells, he said that was the first time that he played third base or the infield for that matter since high school when his entire infield became academically ineligible for that. But, I mean, he did have an opportunity there, threw to first, no problem. He looked okay there. He right? made a really good play. He had to range to his left on a fast runner, uh, Carlos Gonzalez, and, and threw him out easily. And I felt if, you know, he could get to the ball, I wasn't worried about him throwing it. And uh, he made a nice play. And, you know, it seems like most big league players are infielders when you start. And then as you get older, they move you around either the outfield or somewhere else. So I'm sure he had enough ground balls during his younger days. Did anyone ever ask something crazy like that of you, or were you always behind it? I was really close one day in Shea Stadium going to third base. If we tied it up, I was going to third base. And we didn't tie it up, so I never had the opportunity. We'll move on to Kevin Euclid, a guy that does play third base and plays it pretty well. He, uh, he'd been put on the DL, had some back issues. What's he doing right now? Well, he's doing rotational exercises. He's making progress. I can't tell you when we're going to get him back, you know, hopefully sooner than later. But he is going in the right direction. The pain is subsiding. Um, he is feeling better. He's getting more flexibility, and hopefully we'll get him back in the next couple of weeks. Joe, when you look at his history and you look at all the injuries this team has had to sustain over the course of the first two months of this season, really. How much more careful are you with Kevin Euclid knowing that he's had some issues in that Well, you know you have to clear it up. I have been a back patient, and I know how tricky it is and, and how you have to really maintain it. So, so for me, we got to make sure he's healthy before we bring him back because we don't want him to play a couple days and then go out for another month. And you look at what went on in, in Tampa earlier this week. It seems like half of your team is there right now with uh, Mark They had a Tichero. charter flight down there for all the guys. You're joking. I'm right? joking. Okay, <laughs> just checking. Alex has been hitting balls off the tee and, and running. Uh, Jeet is still not doing anything. Servi's basically just kind of doing a lot of leg work to try to keep himself in shape. But 
Each one of our guys is getting closer to coming back, and that excites us. Well, we got the injury news right now, but let's move on the field to the actual product. You visited Coors Field, a place where uh, you had spent some time with the Rockies. What was it like being back for you? Uh, it, it was great for me. Um, I have family there. My brother lives out there with his wife, Teresa, and their three kids, so I got to spend some time with them. Um, I got to see some old friends in Dante Bichette, Walt Weiss, Renee Latchman, Jim Wright, who was my first pitching coach when I was in Peoria, the pitching coach there. Um, got to see ownership there. Um, I had a wonderful time playing there. I mean, to be able to go there and draw over 4.4 million people our first year and how excited everyone was in the Rocky Mountain region, it was a real pleasure for me to go back. It was interesting. 11 runs scored in three days between the two teams. I have never seen that. I don't know if you'll ever see that again. And uh, it, it was a great series.